i welcome you to yet another super interesting session in this today's session we will be discussing about a bet on the jockey a bet on the jockey not on the horse uh, so today's session will be on idfc first bank and it's a bet on v vidyanathan's capabilities to build a world class bank why i am saying so so we will be discussing about that today let us go forward and uh, start with the session uh, as i can see so i think in 2019 i had uh, written a blog on idfc first bank uh, and the name of the blog was abundant the most valuable gift that i gave to my 6 month old princess uh, that i wrote it in actually uh, march 2020 so that is when uh, my child was just 6 months old and uh, i gifted Uh, the shares of idfc first bank to my child uh, so i have already written a blog here hope you have gone through that blog because this blog explains about a bet which can sustain for long because uh, here i have written that uh, <clears throat> what can be that long lasting investment which i can uh, gift it to my child so if we have seen the history of all the companies banks are the oldest and longest living businesses in the world so that's why i chose bank and ultimately when i was uh, looking for a bank there was no other best option than idfc first bank and uh, the reasons why i have uh, means i like idfc first bank i have written in this blog hope you have gone through this blog apart from that uh, i have explained the total journey for v vidyanathan so v vidyanathan since he started the journey with future capital earlier he was working with icici bank he left that and started his own first dream a stepping stone towards becoming a bank and he was able to acquire this nbfc future capital from kishore biyani and it was a management buyout it was a management buyout and uh, pe funds like uh, varbak pinkas supported v vidyanathan in fulfilling his dream uh, to take over that nbfc and that nbfc was taken over by v vidyanathan and v vidyanathan let me tell you he is uh, he was responsible for the success of what icici bank retail uh, did in past 20 25 years so so in in past uh, 15 20 years so v vidyanathan was instrumental in developing the and building the strong base uh, for retail side for icici bank and uh, he has he had a lot of experience in banking already so uh, he took over future capital and it was later renamed uh, as capital first future capital which was earlier a loss making company he turned out the uh, turned out that company into a profitable company and later it became uh, 8000 crore market cap company and uh, the stock went up 10x so uh, and, and i have been tracking v vidyanathan since 2012 2013 so that's why i have much confidence on v vidyanathan and that's why i'm talking about Uh, a bet on the jockey not on the horse so i have given that all points in this blog a dream true come true for v vidyanathan becoming a bank then road ahead the merger the, there is one more video so all these videos will help you understand the journey for v vidyanathan and how his journey uh, came true because when capital first got merged with idfc bank later on it is called as uh, idfc first bank and uh, uh, his dream came true and they become a bank finally but there were some capital allocation mistakes which uh, v vidyanathan did because he was not able to anticipate the entire pain of idfc bank uh, which was having a high infrastructure loans and uh, which were turning bad and he was not able to anticipate at that point of time during the merger and since 2018 to today all his efforts has been to clean up that whole mess which idfc bank had uh, the legacy issues most of the legacy issues uh, he, he is able to clear that and now 
IDFC First Bank is on the path of becoming really a world class bank. So I'll be discussing about that. So this blog explains you in detail. So just after this session, I want you to go through this blog so that uh, you'll have a better understanding of who V Vaidyanathan is. Now let us understand first uh, background information of Capital First Vaidyanathan. Had built ICICI Bank's retail bank business between 2000 and 2009, and he was later uh, he was later he he later became MD and CEO of ICICI Prudential Life Insurance Company in 2009-2010. 2011-12, he acquired significant stake in small retail finance NBFC through leverage. So within a year, he built a prototype of loan book of 770 crore, and he pr presented the proof of concept. to many global equity investors for a leveraged buyout in 2012 he had concluded india's largest management buyout and which was supported by warburg pincus and he founded capital first as a new entity with new shareholders new board new business plan and fresh equity infusion then he turned around the company from a losses of 30 crore to a pat of 327 crore in just 8 year time in just 8 year time and so he has already delivered he has done it twice first at icici when he was looking after retail and he was instrumental in doing that second at capital first and this will not be much different this is the third time where he is heading idfc first bank so he has done it already so that's why i say that it's a bet on the jockey not on the horse so he Uh, the loan assets grew at a pace of 35% cagr from 29000 crore uh, to 60000 crore and most of it was done through new age technologies models uh, the capital market capitalization of the company went up 10 times as i said it became a 10 bagger and i was in that journey during those times uh, 2012 2013 to 2017 2018 so it became a 10 bagger and as per its stated strategy capital first was looking for a banking license to convert this nbfc into a bank so opportunity struck in form of idfc bank to merge with capital first uh, and uh, when the whole merger happened in that blog i have explained that i have shared one video where uh, the erstwhile md and ceo of uh, idfc which was mr rajiv lal uh, he stepped down and uh, he gave the whole responsibility of the merged bank to v vaidyanathan and v vaidyanathan became a ceo of idfc first bank and in that video he has also shared that v vaidyanathan thus becomes my wealth manager because ultimately he will be running the bank and he got stepped down and v vaidyanathan became the face of cap idfc first bank so as well capital first uh, as per his state strategy it uh, moved ahead with banking merger and thus idfc first bank was formed so successful trajectory uh, what he did with capital first uh, was like asset under management went at uh, means grew at a pace of 29% total income grew at a pace of 47% profit after tax grew at a pace of 56% cagr from 2013 to 2018 eps went at a pace of went up at a pace of 46% cagr from 4 rupees to 33 rupees in just 5 years so that was the story about capital first one more thing return on equity so fr14 the return on equity for capital first was 2% from 2% they went up to 14% market capitalization so 780 crores to 8000 crores so stock went up 10 times so idfc first bank was created through the merger of two institutions idfc first was first bank was created uh, in december 18 2018 and prior to idfc first bank idfc was having infrastructure financing so it was uh, renowned for contribution towards infrastructure since 1997 capital first was highly successful msme and consumer financing entity from 2012 until 2018 with strong track record of profit growth and asset quality so 13.9 shares of idfc bank were issued for each share of capital first during the merger 
so background of idfc bank idfc bank was uh, set up, means idfc limited was set up in 1997 mr rajiv lal joined the company in 2005 they successfully expanded the business into asset management institutional broking infrastructure debt fund in 2014 uh, rbi gave in gave them the license for banking following this idfc limited divested its infrastructure assets in, and liabilities into a new entity idfc bank through de merger so they were having all the loan assets but no kacha current account saving account because the all the loan assets were were uh, shifted from idfc limited to idfc bank and thus idfc bank was created by de merger of infrastructure lending business of idfc to idfc bank in 2015 The bank was was launched through a de merger of IDFC Limited in November 2015. During the subsequent three years, the bank developed a strong and robust framework, including uh, strong IT capabilities for scaling up the banking operations. So even before IDFC First Bank was born, uh, after the merger between Capital First and IDFC, because I was tracking IDFC Bank even during those times. So. i was saying that it has it had a technological edge they had already developed but they were struggling to get current account and saving account and deposits they were struggling hard but just after the merger with uh, capital first it uh, and the strategy which v vidyanathan had because rajiv lal never had uh, the experience of raising deposits and current account and saving account but on the other hand vim vaidyanathan had that all experience and it became uh, useful for the merged entity later the bank designed efficiently tre- efficient treasury management all that is done uh, so they were looking for growth in casa so management commentary so they uh, uh, this is the latest management commentary of idfc first bank so they focused on building a strong platform in the first 3 years so just after the merger between uh, idfc and idfc first uh, means idfc and capital first just after when the idfc first bank was born uh, vaidyanathan understood that that this the mess which is in infrastructure loan is high at that stage and all the legacy issues were hurt, hurting the bank and it took 4 years for v vaidyanathan to clean out that mess and uh, right now the retail assets have grown to a big number so we will be discussing about that so we focused on building strong platform for the first 3 years on merger we had a loan book of 1 lakh 4660 crores and they had only retail deposits of 10400 crores so they slowed down first in the first 3 4 years what they did was they slowed down the loan growth Uh, in the first three years, and they grew the retail base first. And in that uh, period, if you just see the loan growth, loan book growth is stagnant. But on the other side, the deposits grew at a pace of seventy-two percent CAGR for the past three-four years. Uh, so loan book, what management is saying right now is loan book will grow further from here because for the first three-four years they were building this strong casa and deposit. and uh, the loan book remain, uh, remain stagnant current loan book is at 137000 crore uh, so what they have been able to do is build the strong casa build the strong uh, deposit but at a later stage now they are at a cusp of a big growth happening on the loan side because loan kisko nahi chahiye everyone wants loan and this uh, company has a good credit dispersal process and within 3 to 4 years there is a high possibility that they might be able to double their loan book they might they might be able to double their loan book uh, in 4 to 5 years so management ex- themselves has given a guidance of 20 to 25% loan book growth on a sustainable basis from here on for the foreseeable future and uh, all legacy accounts provided for are disclosed in the npa most of the loan book which they were having most of it which turned into npa all that is provided and they uh, management is saying we have su- sufficiently provided for all the legacy stress corporate and infrastructure loans share of infrastructure book has further reduced to just 5% it was 
just after the merger it was close to more than 80% so from 80% it has came down to just 5% so all the uh, infrastructure loan book has been replaced by retail they didn't grew the total pie of that loan book what they did was uh, on one side they were selling the loan assets and on the other hand they were building the retail loan assets so the whole pie remained the same but the composition of that pie change from heavy infrastructure lending towards retail lending so they did that in uh, in past 4 5 years in, in 3 to 4 years the infrastructure book has further reduced to 5.2% to uh, of the total fund assets from uh, 9.2% just last year it was 9.2% so it has half high quality of incremental wholesale lending they have sanctioned about 7500 crores of new corporate clients since the merger and there is nil np on this book demonstrated capability to raise the funds we grew retail deposits by 54000 crore so it was just uh, as i said 14000 crore from 14000 crore now they are at 68000 crore so it shows the capability of management strong casa base they have built a strong casa base of around 50% which is best in the class in the industry even kotak bank uh, when i was talking about casa i used to talk only about kotak bank now idfc first bank also falls into that league uh, because they have built a casa of 50% which is best in class in the industry stable asset quality their npa gross npa and net npa has reduced to uh, 1% net NP has reduced to 1% gross NP has reduced to 2.63% strong capital position bank is strongly capitalized at 16.8% diversified fees fee income now if you are user of fastag you will see that they have penetrated they are penetrating in a big way in fastag cash management wealth management wholesale loan retail loan insurance distribution just few days back they have announced that they have tied up with star health insurance distribution mutual fund distribution and in all businesses so retail fees constitute to 84% of the total fee this is what management has said strong growth in operating profits while the loan book grew only 13% core operating profit has grown by 44% so from 1900 crore to 2700 crores so net profit operating profit operational income due to credit specific okay net profit impact of 500 crores so all this they have given you can go through this uh, i'll be sharing this presentation with you so as i said from uh, retail deposits from 13000 crore now it is at 68000 crore from 8% CASA ratio, now they are close to 50%. From 3% net interest margin, now they are at 5.96%. So this is industry best NIMs, let me tell you. This is industry best NIMs, not even HDFC or Kotak Bank has achieved. Just after this, Bajaj Finance, which does a net interest margin of around 9 to 10%, but that is a NBFC, that is not a bank. But in case of bank, it is the best interest. It is having the industry best net interest margin. Retail and commercial finance uh, grew from 42,000 crore to 95,000 crore. Capital adequacy ratio, operating profit. So here they have given funded assets, 1 lakh 17,000 crore to 1 lakh 31,000 crore. Retail funded assets were 65,000 crore in that, and which is now at 83,000 crore, which shows that retail pie is growing at a higher pace customer deposits it was 82000 crore just one year back now it is at 93000 crore casa ratio is at 50% asset quality 1.53% is the net npa which has came down profitability on all fronts it is it is just doing what they did at capital first aem growth Five year PAT CAGR. So, this is uh, capital first profitability. Five year PAT CAGR, cost to income ratio. This is what they did it earlier with capital first. And this is what they are doing with uh, IDFC First Bank also. So, in case of capital first, asset quality earlier 
was close to decadal high asset quality just after the demonetization and all so they had already done that earlier and once again they are doing it here at idfc first bank so if you just see the product of idfc first bank you will see they are now across all the segments earlier there was no gold loan now recently they have also entered into group gold loan also so products are spread across all the uh, spectrums from mass mass affluent affluent to uhn and ultra hn so i have seen uh, the differentiated offerings because when i joined i have closed all my accounts and i have started means uh, with idfc first bank just uh, one and a half years back so uh, because i wanted to have a experience of idfc first bank and uh, i was having uh, confidence and conviction in this so i closed other banks and i opened an account with idfc first bank for the same thing to understand what all products they are offering how they are operating and all those things and i have been a, a happy customer bank now has a strong as well as diversified deposit base so so the wholesale book this is the breakup of uh, retail and commercial finance book rural loan against property commercial finance wheels so if you just see see most of the data i don't look at this in deep the reason for that is it's a bet on v vidyanathan so because i just give a glance on the numbers are they improving or not so i don't go much into deep the reason for that is as i said it's a bet on v vidyanathan's capability ultimately a person who has delivered two times in past and one time you have seen it in it uh, doing so just not to be uh, on a blind side i'm just seeing the numbers also so that uh, i'm best assured that i am on the right track so share holding pattern uh, of this is idfc financial holding company holds 36% stake warburg pinkas owns 9% stake president of india owns 4% stake and uh, v vaidyanathan is now holding less than i think less than half percent so when i was betting on idfc first bank it was in pandemic uh, because that's when it became a multi bagger after that the stock went up from 18 rupees to 70 rupees so most of the people uh, had seen that journey happening from 18 to 70 but in the recent times because i was never bullish on idfc first bank for for like one year two year three year or five year so i was bullish more on idfc first bank from a 20 year perspective uh, but but the thing is when the stock was such available at such a deep discount during the pandemic it made sense to even uh, buy it for one or two years but after that uh, i never liked idfc first bank but i got interested today the reason for that was uh, management is now talking about loan book growth which can happen up, uh, around 20 to 25% going forward which means that uh, loan book itself can double from here in 4 to 5 years so if that happens uh, because current loan book is 137000 crore and if they are able to double this like i am saying that and, and doubling won't be an issue because to achieving 250000 crore loan book won't be an issue given the past record of idfc first bank uh, means uh, past record of v vidyanathan with capital first so when i was looking at this and also uh, even after lot of legacy loans they are provided for that uh, there is some uncertainty related to some part which we don't know whether they might turn bad or not so from that perspective i was not much bullish on idfc first bank for the next 2 to 3 years but in order to make that uncertainty into your advantage what we need to have is we need to either buy it at the rock bottom valuation which is too difficult to time but on the other hand idfc limited was giving me that opportunity so why i looked at idfc limited the reason for that is as as we are seeing here IDFC Limited holds 36.49% of IDFC First Bank and IDFC Limited was trading at a big discount to its valuation 
so even earlier i was betting on idfc limited as a trade not uh, for the vision like six month or a one year kind of a trade i was looking for that but not from a longer perspective but when the news came that idfc limited which also holds asset management business and they want to sell this business to bandhan bank because that became a great advantage because the cash will come on to the balance sheet of idfc limited and idfc limited shareholders are waiting for a positive return from past 10 12 years and as you know that i like to buy one of the hated stocks and idfc limited is one of the hated stocks so that's why i started studying idfc limited once again the reason for on a minimum side one year and on a longer side three year perspective i started looking at idfc limited because idfc limited is a company which owns 36% stake in idfc first bank which will be valued as on today's valuation which will be valued at 7800 crores so apart from that they were holding a asset management business which they recently sold it off to bandhan bank at a valuation of 4500 crores put in total 7800 crores plus 4500 crores even if you deduct the taxes also it will be 12000 crores so 12000 crore was the total valuation of idfc limited and idfc was just trading at a market cap of 7500 crore so which means if you just do the percentage calculation idfc limited was trading at a 50% discounts to its valuation because from 12000 to 7500 the discount is 50% if you just discount that the 50% discount so it provided huge margin of safety and apart from that one trigger which came which most of the people are forgetting today in this bear market was because we have seen a reverse merger between hdfc and hdfc bank now i started looking at is there a possibility of idfc reverse merging with idfc bank so i had posted about that earlier on telegram channel you must have gone through that but apart from that when this news came when the board of directors of idfc limited and idfc first bank they gave in principle approval for a reverse merger so this is the uh, notice this is the uh, update which they give so here it says that we would like to inform the board of direct of the bank at its meeting held today December 38 2021 they have considered for the proposal merger of IDFC limited and IDFC financial holding company with IDFC first bank and have expressed that we are in principle in the favor of above merger subject to the approval of board of directors shareholders creditors statutory and regulatory approvals of the respective entities so this is what they said and in this case the boards of idfc and idfc financial holding company on wednesday approved the sale of idfc asset management to a consortium led by uh, bandhan bank at 4500 crore this one one more uh, news and one more news from idfc first bank that they have also approved the merger between idfc and idfc first so all this became triggers because if someone is just blind fundamentally he will be able to make money our approach should be technicals fundamentals value and trigger so when i was looking at uh, the fundamentals fundamentals were improving value i was seeing great value in idfc limited instead of buying uh, idfc first bank it made sense for me to buy idfc limited so i went ahead and bought that the reason for that was it was providing me huge margin of safety because earlier when there was no news of a new reverse merger happening no in principle approval we would have calculated on a discount basis for idfc limited because the holding companies usually trade at a discount to its valuation so in that case the holding company discount made sense but when the reverse merger in principle approval has already came some or the other day we don't know when it will happen it might take 6 months it might take 1 year it might take 2 years we don't know when it will happen but it has to happen over the next 2 to 3 years this is what i think 
so if it is going to happen in th uh, three years in the in the max period because it is highly uncertain when this complete reverse merger will happen so but from that perspective if the reverse merger is happening because for idfc shareholders if you want to unlock the value for shareholders because they have not seen a positive return from past 10 years if you want to unlock the value for shareholders whatever the amount they will be receiving from uh, the sale of amc first they can give a special dividend for their shareholders because they have been waiting for a positive return from past 10 years and that is the reason why the idfc didn't wanted to focus on amc business they sold it off to bandhan bank so that transaction will complete in next few months and the, whenever the transaction completes that there is a case that this 4000 crore can be a case for a special dividend number one even if there is no special dividend, if let us say both the board members, IDFC First Bank and IDFC, both of them agrees that the reverse merger will happen along with that cash and that cash component will be invested in IDFC First Bank. In that case also, IDFC limited shareholders will have a better advantage because in that case, maybe for one share of IDFC limited, they might get two shares of IDFC First Bank. I'm not uh, yet sure what management will actually do, but I think that might happen because the value for IDFC Limited, first they are holding this check. Apart from that, the cash is also coming in. So in, in that uh, merger ratio, maybe one is to 1.5 or one is to two, it might happen. So all that is a possible scenario going forward because it's a special situation and merger will happen because idfc now don't hold any other business so it's in best interest for idfc limited to go for reverse merger and both the boards have already approved that so that is why i was looking at this and if you just see the latest reports means this latest update from idfc first bank so once again this is this is just one month update this is just uh, came today Earlier it was 49%. The CASA today is at 50.3%. So retail business is at 65% of overall funded assets as on 30th June. Infrastructure loan due grew by 35%, and that is just 5% today. Overdues. So all this uh, this update I'll be sharing with you. You can go through that. So all this done. What I feel is it's like heads I win big, tails I don't lose much when I am going with IDFC Limited. Because there are three scenarios which might play out. One, number one scenario, in even if reverse merger doesn't happen, I bought IDFC Limited because I'm bullish on IDFC first one. Because otherwise I'm not much uh, positive on buying any uh, holding company because that is the last thing one should do when no one is able to find any value in the business means if no one is able to find any value in the market at that point of time it these are the last bets to bet on holding companies but when you're really bullish on the company means the company which is holding the child company which is idfc first bank then and then only you should look at idfc limited so number one, what is the possibility that IDFC limited without any reverse merger, it keeps on going as on as it is without any reverse merger for next one, two to three years. So in that case, what will happen if the numbers for IDFC first bank improve going forward, all that done, if people start looking at IDFC as a great opportunity, automatically the stock for IDFC limited will re-rate because the movement of IDFC Limited will be dependent on the movement of IDFC First Bank. So that is scenario number one. Scenario number two is there might be a special dividend. So for 4,000 crore, I think uh, there might be a special dividend anywhere between 20 to 25 rupees. Uh, and then reverse merger because if IDFC First Bank doesn't want capital and they don't want to dilute uh, the bank further, in that case, IDFC might choose to give a special dividend and in the reverse merger, whatever the ratio happens in that ratio, we'll get the shares. 
uh, 1.2 shares again one share or 1.3 shares again one so what whatever the ratio might be we might be in that situation third possibility is reverse merger happens without special dividend and all that capital goes into idfc first bank so in that case also i think in that case there is a high possibility that for one share at least 1.4 shares of idfc first bank people will receive 1.4 or 1.5 shares of idfc because right now if you just look at the whole calculation uh, like like as i said that idfc limited is trading at a discount of 50% so which means automatically one idfc is holding 1.5 shares of idfc first bank one idfc limited is holding 1.5 shares of idfc limited so that is like that so my take personally i don't like banking and financial business because there is a high leverage and I, i stay away from banking business if the bank is not able to recover the money back it can brutal it can become a brutal thing for a investor however my bet is not a bet on idfc first bank but it's a bet on the person running the bet it's a bet on the jockey not on the horse b vidyanathan did not anticipate the pain in the legacy loans with idfc which it carried and in hindsight the merger looked like a capital allocation mistake by capital uh, to capital uh, first shareholders however worst is behind for the bank with casa nearing industry best levels nim being industry best with loan book growth possibility of 25% over the next 3 to 5 years having strong credit reimbursal process new business can minimize the impact of any past issues and idfc first bank can return to black and achieve a loan book size of 2.5 lakh from 1.37 lakh right now uh, lakh crore right now return on assets even with a moderate expectation of 1 to 1.5% they can do a net profit of anywhere between 2500 to 3500 crores over the next 3 to 5 years with an eps of 4 to 6 rupees in 3 to 5 years provided bank doesn't do any further dilution of equity with idfc holding 36.5% stake in idfc first bank valued at 7200 crore amc business cash of 4000 crore post taxes totally 11200 crore valuation is trading at just a market cap of 7850 so with in principle approval for merger with both entities idfc is just providing enough margin of safety of 45 to 50% then idfc first bank so it makes sense to look at idfc and if someone is bullish on idfc first bank he must study idfc limited so idfc first bank is uh, idfc first bank a bet through idfc is thus a low risk high uncertainty opportunity which qualifies my criteria of heads i win big tails i don't lose much approach and idfc is thus a potential wealth creator so thank you for attending this session so don't forget to follow our social media handles for the dose of knowledge wisdom and ideas you can uh, follow us on facebook youtube insta twitter and apart from that i would like to uh, tell you about this blog i have been writing this blog from past 4 uh, years now you must uh, follow that blog so that uh, you'll get a lot of insights and one more thing uh, i regularly take workshops on techno value investing so how to uh, blend fundamentals technicals value and trigger because just by understanding technicals it is just 25% like fundamentals carries 25% weight technicals carry 25% weight value carries 25% weight and triggers carry 25% weight so when you complete this whole you become a holistic investor technicals fundamentals value and trigger because technicals fundamentals will tell you what to buy value will tell you how much to buy technical will tell you when to buy when to sell and triggers will help you prioritize between the bets because there might be 10 15 bets but if there are no near term triggers uh, it might cost a big opportunity cost so that's why I'll, i take regular workshops and uh, the next workshop will be happening on 10th july 11 am so you should attend that workshop you will be getting a lot of insights so if you are watching this video on youtube you will be getting uh, the link of this workshop in the description below